good morning. So, um, I want to make another video about the Korean lifestyle. And I sort of got an idea to this video because of a discussion I've had online lately. So the topic for this day's video is going to be how to use the fiction. Now, as we all know, the Gorian lifestyle is based upon a series of fiction books. And of course then, some of the difficulties in uh, being a Gorian is knowing what part of this fiction is where the philosophy and the essential things lie, and which part of it is, well, part of the fiction. And how much should then the fiction parts be taken into our lifestyles? Now, for example, well, let me first start with the discussion that inspired this video. I was discussing with a lovely young girl who said that she could not be Gorian because she had financial problems and she had to work, so obviously she couldn't be Gorian. And I tried to explain to her that being Gorian doesn't cost money, it costs dedication. That the Gorian lifestyle is something that lives inside of you. If you accept the philosophy as part of your lives, then everything you do becomes Gorian. Like when I cook spaghetti, that's Gorian, because I am Gorian. Yeah, uh, of course, uh, five minutes later, a so-called free man showed up and told me that uh, he couldn't listen to this anymore because um, he had been studying, been reading the books four times and had been studying them for years. Okay, uh, and uh, clearly I was completely wrong because there was a lot of pasta restaurants where he lived and. I was saying that all of them then were Gorian. No, what I'm saying is that when you are Gorian, the things you are, you do become Gorian, but never mind, this is a little bit of a derail. Anyway, what he then goes on to tell me is that no, he uh, um, identified with, uh, and I'm going to mangle these names because I'm horrible at pronunciations, the Chulaks, and he had gotten replicas of their weapons made and it was training with them every day, so clearly he was Gorian. And he goes on to refer to himself as a Chulak. So no, you're not. You're an American. Chulaks are a race of people in a series of science fiction books. You're an American. Now, I think that if getting replicas of some of the Gorian weapons and training with them makes you feel closer to the philosophy, then all is well. Then uh, you can uh, by all means do that, but that's not what makes you Gorian. Basically, the weapons, the peoples, and all of this are part of the fiction. It's not part of the philosophy. It's like, sometimes just on for fun, me and my three companions say we are Torvaldlanders, because we live up here in Norway, and we are very proud of our Viking ancestry. But we really aren't. We are Norwegian. All of that is part of the philosophy. I can sometimes say that, oh, I'm going to have a cup of black wine, just for the fun of it. But of course, I am having a cup of coffee. Now, I've had other debates with people online. Excuse me, my hair is being annoying. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, anyway, like I said, I've had discussions with people online and also real life who's uh, saying that, well, I don't like any part of the fiction mixed into it at all. Like calling chicken for yellow bird or coffee for uh, black wine and so on, it's all bad. 
and I don't agree. I think that sometimes, including these pieces of fiction, these elements of the fiction can help us get a closer relationship with the philosophy. It's like when I was a slave, we had a Turian style color because we could have used anything for a color. But for us, at least for me, it was important that it was a Gorian style. And of course, that, that's part of the fiction, not the philosophy. The philosophy doesn't give a shit what your color looks like. So, the same with how free women are dressed. That I'm gonna make a video about that. But just for now, if I had been wearing what I'm wearing today, pants, a uh, singlet, and with my hair loose and been walking around on the streets of R, I would have been arrested and enslaved like this. But I'm not living on the streets of R. I'm living in Bergen, Norway. So, yeah. Now, where I think the problem with taking elements of the fiction comes in is when you let that block your view of the philosophy. Like the gentleman I was having a discussion with obviously do. Basically, it doesn't help to say, oh, but I believe in the natural order and I train with weapon replicas every day. Um, okay. So if I'm, I get a replica Batleth, I become a Klingon. I run around with a replica Batleth and learn how to use it. Uh, so I can in impress all the other geeks and various conventions. I'm a Klingon. My head will sprout ridges and... Yeah? Not exactly. Basically, what this person has done is let the fiction completely cloud him. And that is also the arguments of those people who are very much against using any elements of the fiction. That basically it is easy then to get trapped in that. It's easy to get trapped in the robes of concealments and the black wine and the weapons and all of that and it becomes basically a trekkie fandom because really that's what this person is doing he is living a fandom not a lifestyle basically what the gorian lifestyle is is the philosophy now this philosophy is based not just on John Norman's idea, but on a lot of real life cultures. Like the Romans, the Viking, the Greek, uh, Native American. There's a, there are quite a few more too. Um, Spartans, basically, we, we can go on listing these for quite some time. Basically, it's a mix of ideas from these cultures, mixed in with a, quite a bit of Nietzsche. And then this author has mixed in his own ideas. And this mixture has created a philosophy that some of us who call ourselves Gorian find very appealing and find to enrich our lives. And first of all, this philosophy is much more than the natural order. And also when people, when that's the first thing they say, that I'm a Gorian because I believe in the natural order, you can guarantee that I have misunderstood the idea of the natural order. And what they mean is, I believe that if I have a penis, I should rule over every woman. Which is not the natural order. So, yeah. Basically, if I went to a Gorian event, I might like to dress up in robes of concealment. I might like to wear something like a sari and cover my head and possibly my face and so on because I would, I would enjoy 
connecting myself to that element of the fiction. In my everyday life, I do not wear that. I wear everyday clothes and I show cleavage. Now, for some foreign women, they don't. They always dress very covered up. And another Gorian woman I talked with, she was very concerned with it being very ladylike. It was not so much that you should cover everything up, but it should be very ladylike. So uh, she dressed like Brie in The Desperate Housewives. And all of this are basically you take your idea of the robes of concealment and implement it in your life. Now, of course, these robes are part of the fiction, not part of the philosophy. They were done that, like that because it's a problem on gore with women being kidnapped. And you then don't want to, what shall we say, advertise the goods. When people, when um, men then come in and take away a woman, you want them to take away the slave that wears next to nothing, rather than your wife or free companion, who then is covered up so he can't see what he's getting, so the risk he's taking by kidnapping her becomes a lot greater because he doesn't know if he'll really get a reward for it. So, yeah. All these are part of the fiction, but for some people, including those parts of the fiction is important, and I'm in support of that. Like I said, I like calling coffee black wine at times, I like wearing robes of concealment at times, but I keep in mind that these are basically part of the fiction, it is part of the fan elements. The lifestyle itself is based on the philosophy, understanding the philosophy and incorporating that in your life, in your everyday life. And the philosophy is not about the swords. It is not about the slaves. It is about an attitude to how you see life. Therefore, when you are a Gorian, when you play a computer game, you are Gorian. When you walk your dog, you are Gorian. And when you have sex with your slave, you are Gorian. One of these things are not more Gorian than the other. Now, that is not saying that playing a computer game is Gorian. But whatever you do when you are Gorian becomes a Gorian act. Because if you live according to the philosophies, then everything you do will be, uh, will be an expression of those philosophies. So, yes, now, I'm pagan, and I like wearing uh, pagan symbols, like I have this alchemical um, symbol I wear around my neck, and I have this pentagram ring, and so on, but of course, these things are only props. I wouldn't be any less pagan if I rip this pendant off my neck. I like wearing these things and I can often w wander around with crystals around my neck and be quite, look quite the new ager with uh, flowing dresses and so on because I like to express my faith and my views that way. Including these props makes me feel closer to my faith. And it is the same with Gorians and using parts of the fiction. For some, it makes them feel closer to the philosophy. The problem is when this overshadows the philosophy. We have a saying in Norway of not seeing the forest for all the trees, and that can definitely become a danger here. So basically, you can train with your Chulak weaponry all you want. It doesn't make you Gorian. It's like there's um, a yeah, swords training group here in Bergen. It doesn't make you a knight or someone living in um, the 1200s. And it doesn't make you a Viking either to 
train with these weapons. Now, for some people, learning how to use a viking sword, for example, or a viking axe, can help them feel closer to their ancestry. I definitely felt that when I started to learn how to sew, because women throughout the ages has been making clothes, sewing, embroidering, and so on, and it made me feel closer to women through the ages. But it doesn't make me a renaissance or middle ages woman, even if I learn how to sew. So, yeah. Basically, I think that the gore lifestyle is based on fiction. And sometimes including elements of that fiction can help you, you understand the lifestyle better. It can make you better implement it in your life. But you have to <coughs> keep your eye on what's the philosophy and what's the fiction. And remember that it's the philosophy that's important. Not your sword, not your colors, not your robes of concealment. And definitely not your veil of bird and black wine. So, yeah. That is basically what I wanted to say. Fiction can be a very powerful thing, especially for a lifestyle based on works of fiction. But you have to... You have to accept the philosophy into your heart first. Then all the others can follow if you want it or if you don't want it. But you can be a Gorian even if you live in a situation where you cannot include any parts of the fiction. Where you don't have a slave, you don't have a sword, you don't have any of these things. You are Gorian by how you live, not by how many elements of these trashy 1960s and 1970s science fiction books you manage to cram into your life. Because that's more Trekkie behavior than Gorian behavior. So yeah, I hope you have a great day. See you later.